Scripture reading today will be from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 7. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. They want to hope in something. Biblical hope is more than wishful thinking. It is a earnest expectation of things that can be had because of God's promises, because of the things that God has done for us and will do for us in the future. I entitled the lesson, A Life of Hope. But as we go through the lesson, I hope that you see that we are centering this on the fact that a life of hope in God, in Christ, and in the fact that he has given us his holy word, his commandments, the things that we can look to and have a surety that not anyone else can have but those who are our followers of God, followers of Christ. The psalmist put it so well, my soul waits in silence for God only. People will put hope in so many different things. And sometimes we don't think of hope as we should as Christians. It is not some wishful thinking, some, something that may or may not happen, but if we truly hope in God, we have a trusting faith in Him. By way of introduction, I want to look at some other verses that deal with this topic. First, let's look at 1 Thessalonians 12, uh, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 where the Apostle Paul, addressing the church there in Thessalonica, says, We give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the presence of our God and Father. In Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 24, the Apostle Paul would write, For in hope we have been saved. But hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. And look again with me at Hebrews 11 and verse 1, a verse you may be familiar with, but notice the language once again. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Our faith is, it must be a trusting faith that we can center our hope in, a hope that can, should not ever be shaken. And you may recall 1 Corinthians 13, 13, after the great treatise on love that Paul gives to the church there in the first century, they were having many problems, and he told them the things that you're doing is not through a motivation of love. And he ends that particular chapter, ends with, but now faith Hope, love, abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. We're going to center on that middle one today in our discussion this morning, talking about the hope that we can have through God by His Son, Jesus Christ. And as we do so, I want to deal with it in the fact that hope, first and foremost, hope solidifies the past. Now, what do I mean by that? What, what it, as we look at these passages, I want you to think about how God has done things for us in the past, the things that God has already performed. We can look back and have our hope solidified in the things that God has already 
already accomplished for us as Christians, as followers of him. We can look back on the past and say, my hope is, rest, is assured because of what God has already done. So first, it solidifies the past. Titus chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago. But at the proper time manifested even his word in the proclamation with which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior. And he writes again in Romans 15, 4, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. What is your hope placed upon? If we look at the accomplishments that we have done in the past, we may look back and say, well, I can, I can rest assured on what my, my present and my future is going to be because of my accomplishments in the past. But too many times we lay our hope in things that we have accomplished without giving God the credit, without understanding that all things come from God, and without God, we would not even be here. We would not have a place to live, we would not have oxygen to breathe, and so forth. And so when we stop and think about the things that God has accomplished for us and is continuing to do for us, then our hope is something that is solidified even more and should be even more. You see, our hope is solidified by the past because it is built upon a solid foundation. Remember the words found in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus speaking, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. When we become members of the, of the church that Jesus came to establish, that he purchased with his own blood, then we have a hope unlike any other that can be had upon this earth. A hope that is based upon things that have been planned from heaven itself by God himself. And so we can be solidified in our past, in the past that God has given us, the foundation of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 15, Christ, or Jesus said, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence, and keep a good conscience, so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. Now, we may think of our Christianity in different terms and in different ways, and the Bible certainly has many ways that we can look at Christianity. But understanding that the hope that we have is, cannot be had any other way by any other, in, by any other means other than being in Christ. And Peter says, you get ready to talk about this hope that you have. Yes, we must have our sins washed away. Yes, we must be buried in baptism in order to, for that to happen. Yes, we must have a faith in Christ. But this then gives us a hope that we must be ready to talk about, ready to show others how am I living this life of hope because I can live this life of hope because it has been solidified in the past. The foundation that it is built on cannot be shaken. It cannot be changed. God has established his church, and when we are a member of that church, we become a member by being buried in baptism for the remission of our sins, rising to walk in that newness of life that Paul talks about in Romans 6, 3, and 4. Then we have a hope that no other can have. The people in the world that rely on the things in the world may say, well, yes, I, I live a hopeful life. What are they basing that upon? on their own abilities and their own the way that they can do things there is example after example in the bible that teach us that we should not rely upon the things of this world 
but to base our hope, our expectation in God, in God alone, as the psalmist told us, in God only. Not only does a life of hope solidify and, and is solidified by the past, but it also energizes our present. You see, without hope, without the hope that we can have in Christ, the meaning of our life is different. I chose to word it this way, that hope gives life meaning. We could have said without hope, life is meaningless, and certainly that has been said on many an occasion. But I chose instead to focus, let's focus on the positivity that we have in Christ. We should have the best attitudes of anyone and everyone in this world. We should have this hope should bring us a happiness, a true contentment that is unlike anything this world can provide. And so the hope that we can have in Christ, that we can have through God, gives our life meaning unlike any other person. Christians have and should understand that we have the best life on this earth. In 1 Peter chapter 1, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. As we go through this, I want you to think about what did you hope for yesterday? What did you hope for the day before that? What are you hoping for today? It's been said that if you do not dream big, you will never accomplish great things. And I understand that reasoning. And I understand that we must make plans. But when we're making those plans and we put God into the equation, Christ into the equation, it's a different kind of aspect of our lives. When we base our life, base our life on a hope in Christ, everything else changes for us. And we begin to look at it differently. Peter called it a living hope. Many times, if we rely upon the things of this world, we become disappointed and disenchanted. And we may even get to the point where we think there is no hope. There is no hope for my life to be better. But when we base our life on the hope in Christ, we will not be disappointed and cannot be disappointed if we are looking at it properly. Peter calls it a living hope because it is an expectation. In Colossians 1, verse, beginning in verse 3, he writes, God gives us, through the inspired Apostle Paul, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints. Now notice verse 5, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel. How many times can we read about different things, the aspect of the Christian life, and it all comes back to the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the system of faith that God sent Jesus to establish for us. It all comes back to that. Our life of hope is in the gospel, the word of truth, something we can rely upon and know, as we read earlier in Titus, God cannot lie. Because of that, our hope is sure. It's something that we can have an expectation of. It gives our life meaning unlike anything else in this world. It stabilizes the storms of life. Hope does not mean, and living a Christian life does not mean that things will not happen, that we do not like, that are unpleasant to us. But when we continually look to the hope that is reserved for us in heaven, it stabilizes our life for us. And we can have a contentment no matter what is going on. 
knowing the, the surety of the promises, the hope that we have in God, in Christ. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 13, the Bible says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely, completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The idea of fix your hope completely, it's fix as in put it on the hope of Christ and nothing else. And then he further emphasizes that with the word completely. Fix your hope completely. Fix your hope completely. In Hebrews 6, 17 to 20, a verse you may have thought of right away when we began talking about hope. In the same way, God desiring even more to show to the heirs of the promise the unchangeableness of his purpose, interposed with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And time does not permit us to talk about all of the things in that passage, but I, for your study, for our study today, I want you to understand that the hope that we have in Christ is like that anchor and, and we understand the concept of what an anchor does for a boat or a ship. It, it puts it in place upon the water and it stays there because the anchor is holding it, holding it right there. And when we take the hope of God, the hope that we can have uh, living the Christian life, it solidifies our soul. Our soul knows, as the psalmist wrote, that we, when God is our refuge, God is the place that I go to for strength. God is the place that I put my trust in. It solidifies the past. It energizes the present. And hope brightens the future for us. Proverbs 23 and verse 18. We're going to look at several passages from the Old Testament and show you that God has always been a God who wants his people his people to have a ho the hope that can only be had in him. First, Proverbs 23, 18. Surely there is a future, and your hope will not be cut off. And Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Psalms 31, verses 23 to 24. O oh, love the Lord, all you his godly ones. The Lord preserves the faithful and fully recompenses the proud doer. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. In Psalms 130 and verse 7, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption strikes me that as we look at the different passages that speak of hope, that maybe this is not a word study that you've done in the past. And it's not one that, that I go to automatically when I think of words that describe the Christian life. But as I was looking at this and studying about it, in the Old Testament, some 60 plus times the word hope is mentioned. And in the New Testament, nearly 70 times it's mentioned. God wants us to have a hope that is unlike any other. And he provided that for us. He provided that for us so that we can know who he is and hope and trust in that. He wants us to know about the hope that we can have in Jesus Christ so that when this life ends, our future is set. This life is going to end. We have a finite time that we will be here on this earth, whatever time that is. One of the things that was mentioned at PTP and one of the good brother that got up said that he was having a really good day. And he was a, a, a gentleman of some age. He never told us how, what his age was, but you could tell by, by looking at him that he was a gentleman of some age. And he said, I was having a really good day until I went into Alan Webster's 
talk today, and he was talking to the teens, and he was trying to get them to understand, even at that young age, that this world is not going to last forever. They're not going to live forever. And so he did an exercise where he told them to, to multiply. The average lifespan is about 79 years. He said, multiply that by 365 days, which is the, the most years are 365 days. Comes out to 28,834, nearly 29,000. He said, so you basically have about 29,000 days, give or take. Oh, that's, of course, this is an average. He said, now take your age and multiply that by 365. And he said, I was having a really good day until I did that exercise and realized my days were pa way past the halfway point. I did that same exercise in this morning myself, and my, my days are over 20,000 already. So I know that I have a finite, my, my, my life is going to be shorter now than it has been to this point, and I know that. But I don't think of that, I don't dwell on it every day. But when we do stop and think about our mortality and the fact that we're not going to be here what are we basing our life on? And if it's not the hope that we have in God, what are we basing it on? Because we're basing it on something. Each morning you get up and there is something that drives you to do the things that you do. And when it's the hope that we have of God in, in Christ, the hope of heaven that we have, then our life is different than if we're not basing it upon that. And so... I want to hope, hopefully, and no pun intended there, but hopefully as we look at this study today, we further understand the great commitment that God has made for us to give us this hope. It brightens the future. And as we look at some verses from the New Testament, I want you, and one from the Old, as you see there, I want you to understand that hope strengthens the soul. It will provide you and give you the strength. As we looked at a moment ago in the present, it will stabilize the storms that we have in this life. But as we look to the fact that we, one day this life will end, we can draw strength from the fact that we have a hope that others cannot have and do not have. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning, let's back up to verse 13. But we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. It was for this he called you through our gospel, that you may gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught, whether by word of mouth or by letter from us. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. As we go about our lives and making the most of our time, doing the best we can for our Lord and Savior, let us live it with a life of hope, knowing that in the future we have the hope that God offers. In the book of Lamentations, this was another verse that came to my mind when I first started developing this lesson in Lamentations 3 and verse 24. But if you go back to verse number 1, we're not going to read the, the whole thing, but if you go back to verse number 1, and I invite you to do that this afternoon and look at where the, the prophet was coming from as he makes the statements that he does, because they're very positive statements, but before he makes this positive statement about his soul longing for God, uh, he, we look at from verse 1 through verse 16, He's not in a good place, as we might say. He's very down. He's very depressed. He's looking around and, and he thinks that no one cares about him, that he has no hope, and that he has that, that life is, is bad, that, and things are so horrible for him that he cannot see the hope. But then it starts to turn around at verse number 17. First he says, My soul has been rejected from peace. I have forgotten happiness. So I say my strength has perished and so my so has my hope from the Lord. 
Have you gotten to that point in your life where you've forgotten the hope that you have from God and in Christ? Have you ever gotten to the point where you think, no one understands the things I'm going through. No one has gone through what I've gone through. That's how the prophet felt. That's how the prophet felt. And he said, my hope has gone. My soul is perishing. But then it truly starts turning around. In verse 19, he says, Remember my affliction and my wondering, the wormwood and the bitterness. Surely my soul remembers and has bowed down within me. When we stop looking deep within ourselves and understand that God has given us a soul that he desires to live with him for all eternity, then we might start thinking more like the prophet started thinking in verse 21, where he says, This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Just a few verses earlier, he was saying his hope was gone. And now he starts remembering God as he should. And he goes on to say, The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, and therefore I have hope in him. I don't know where you're at. Spiritually speaking, I don't know where you're at this morning. But I hope for you that you would look to God and understand that he loves you and the hope that he gives you is based upon that love. But you cannot have that hope. You cannot have that hope unless you become a Christian. And if you are a Christian and that hope has left you, remember the prophet and the example that he gives us. In the book of Thess 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Christians there were concerned about those who had gone on before them. And that they, they didn't know, they didn't know the answer. And so they asked the Apostle Paul and he gives them the answer, beginning in verse 13, where he said, We do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve. Listen to him now. So that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The Apostle Paul wanted them to understand that that hope, they died with that hope. They died with the hope. Now, don't be worried about them that they died as, as someone who had no hope. Every one of us knows someone who has left this life not being right with the Lord. Not having, having not obeyed the gospel or not even recognizing God for who he is. Many of us have family members who have gone on from this world. And we do grieve for them. We are sorrowful that they never obeyed the gospel. And we think about that. But if they are in Christ, our grieving should be tempered with the fact that they led a life of hope. And as we live our lives, knowing that one day we're going to leave this world, we need to live a life of hope also. And then we can meet Christ. 
to be comforted with the knowledge of that. Psalm 62, 5 and 8, I want to read for you in closing. My soul, wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. On God, my salvation and my glory rest. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your heart before him. God, God is a refuge for us. This morning, we have briefly looked at the subject of hope. Hope that solidifies our past, energizes our present, and brightens the future. As we go on and we'll leave this place in a few short moments and go about our lives, I want you to think about the hope that you have in Christ if you are a Christian. If you are a Christian, you have this hope. If you are not a Christian, if you have not been buried in baptism, for the remission of your sins and risen to walk in newness of life, you do not have and cannot claim to have the hope that God has for you. But he wants you to. He wants you to have that hope. And he wants it to energize your world and brighten the future that you can have with him in heaven. If you have any need at all, please come now while we stand and sing.